So we talked about um, the configuration of memory, and we explained what happens when we actually uh, create a variable. We said that whenever a variable is created, um, a piece of memory is being leased to our program. It's kind of renting it out. And when you name that variable something, it is going to uh, name that piece of memory as the name of your variable, and using the name, you can access it. Then we said you can actually create a pointer. A pointer is an exact same thing. It's a variable that you create, but the difference is that a pointer's job is to hold the address of other variables. And you can set the pointer to keep the address of an existing variable. Therefore, you can access that variable in two different ways. What good that is, good, in, good thing about it is that you can access the variables remotely. So, and when you put stuff like when I say target of PTR is 2345, actually the value gets set and um, you can uh, use the pointer to access a variable. That's what we talked about last time. Um, <clears throat> but what happens when you create a point, when you create an array? When you create an array, <clears throat> the way it's simulated, it works like this. So essentially you have <clears throat> you say integer array 5, and it creates five integers back to back and names it something, in this case, AR. And then you can access every element using the index operator, and that's the IPC144 version explanation of it, that each element of the AR array over here has an index, and using that index, for example, AR3 is 2345, you set it to the value, and it works. And it sets it so you can access individual elements of an array. But what happens behind the scene is a bit different. When you actually create an array, of course, a piece of memory to the size of five of those integers is leased to us. Um, five integers back to back are occupied in memory. But immediately after, you see, it is not named AR. As a matter of fact, that piece of memory has no name. It's a nameless piece of memory to the size of five integers that we requested. Then a pointer of the type of the element of the array will get created, a constant one that you cannot change the content of the value. <clears throat> a constant integer pointer is created, and the address of the beginning of the array is inserted into it. So essentially, when you say integer AR5, poo, this happens in one shot. It's not stages that you had. It, before, you had to create an integer yourself. That integer had a name. Then you create a pointer. Then you make that pointer to keep the address of that variable. Therefore, you could access it. When you create an array, that's not the case. When you create an array, it's a combo. Everything happens all at once. When you say, I want an array of five integers, five integers are occupying the memory, the address of beginning of five integers are set into, an, into a pointer of that type. And then you can access the indexes uh, of, the, of the array using that pointer. So essentially, if what I'm saying is true, and the name of the array, so the AR that you see over here, if this AR over here is actually an integer pointer, if I write something like this, what's going to happen? If I say target of AR is set to 2345, what's going to set, get set to 2345? The first element of the array, right? And that's exactly what happens. So as soon as you do this, the first element of the array will be set to 2345. And this is what happens behind the scene. So essentially, if I say AR2 is 444, using the notation of an array, of course, the second, the third element, the element with index 3, will be set to 444. How does it find out how to go? It says, OK, AR is pointing to the beginning of the array, right? Go two integers further. What is the size of one integer? Four bytes. Multiply by two, eight. 
So it starts from the beginning of the array, goes eight bytes further. Where is it? Right at the beginning of that integer. So it puts the value in there. So essentially, the index you put over here, you are telling to the compiler, to computer, to C language, whatever, to go from the address that is kept in AR that many integers further and put it in there. So essentially, I have two ways of doing it. Either the array way, or if I want to show off that I'm a geek and I understand how arrays work, you can actually do like this. The target of AR plus 2. You're essentially telling, so this is where the difference between a, a pointer being an integer and a regular integer shows off. When you have an integer, integer i, and you have 4 in it, you add 1 to it, what happens? It becomes 5, right? Correct? So if I have integer i is equal to 4, and I do i++, plus plus, it becomes 5, correct? If I have an integer pointer i, and I have 4 in it, if I go i++, plus plus, it becomes 8. Size of one integer will be added to it, not 1. That's the difference between an array and an int, uh, sorry, between a pointer and an integer. That's why we have to create a different type. We cannot just use, a, use an integer to, to deal with addresses. Because if you want to, if the reason that this pointer is pointing to an integer is that when you tell it to go to next one, it jumps exactly to the size. So if I have a student structure that is 16 bytes in size, and I create a student structure pointer, structure student pointer, and I add 1 to it, 16 will be added to it, not 1. The size of the, the target will be added to it. Therefore, pointers can jump from one element to the next. Therefore, you can have an array. So if I say AR plus 2, it says the address is 108. Plus 2, 2 multiplied by 4, 8. 108 plus 8, 116. Ta-da! That's going to be 1. And that value is going to get overwritten by the 555 five, five thingy, and therefore that happens. Are we okay with this? Now let's code a little. So essentially I said, if I have integer pointer p, okay? If I have integer a, and I have double b, okay? And I have integer pointer p, and I'll set it to address of a, and I have double pointer Q, and I set it to address of B, right? Then I'm going to say printf percent %u, percent %u, and I go to new line. In here, I'm going to print P, and I'm going to print Q. What's going to be the output of this program? The location of A and B in memory, correct? The location of A and B in memory. Let's run it and see. That's it. You see those two values? That's the location of A and B. Now, what is so important about that? Let me let's let, 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 take a look at this. I'll go P plus plus, and I'll go Q plus plus. I added one to the integer pointer and one to the double pointer. Then I'm going to do the printout again. Take a look. This one is 16, it becomes 20. This one is 500, it becomes 508. Because that's a double pointer, 1 means 8 bytes. The other one is an integer pointer, 1 means 4 bytes. For a character array, 1 means 1 byte. Are we okay with this? That is why pointers are special integers. Because its arithmetic is a little bit different than, than integers. Are we OK with this? Are we OK 1? Are we OK 2? Are we OK? One person is OK. I know that. <laughs> All right. So that's pointers. 
and arrays. So <clears throat> now dealing with pointers and arrays, let's take a look. If I have an array of 10 integers, ah, let's make it 5. OK. All right, so let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. OK. If I have an integer pointer p set to a, what does it mean? OK. Now I'm going to use my <clears throat> amazing artistic capabilities and draw you some Picasso over here. Now, this is the memory. <laughs> okay? This, these are the five integers. This is the pointer A that is pointing to the beginning of, let me see if I can undo that that and that okay a that's better and points to the beginning of the array right now i created it i, I created integer pointer p correct so somewhere in memory another pointer is created right the name is p when i say p is set to a what happens whatever i have inside a is going to get copied into P, correct? Right? Therefore, P is going to point exactly where A is pointing. Is that correct? Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? <laughs> Anybody's okay with this? No? Completely gobbledygook? How about now? I just did I just just show you that let, let's actually okay, go back let's go back let's go back <clears throat> let's go back clear all let's do this first printf percent d new line target of a what is going to get printed Are we okay with 10? 10? Okay, 10. 10 it is. Target, we said that. Come on. I, I, we remember this? Where is it? Come on. Why well, have two copies of it? Anyways, let's bring you. I, I don't know why I have two open, but anyways, I hope it's not going to ruin anything. Oh, this is. Is this the one? Yeah. There you go. Didn't we mention that we have something like this? So when you create a pointer, it's actually this AR thingy is pointing at the beginning of this. Remember that? So I'm, let's call this AR so we feel comfortable. OK? So target of AR points to the beginning. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, sorry. If I run this beautiful program of mine, this happens. 10 gets printed, right? Are we OK with this? Now, if I go, type AR3, what is going to get printed? 40. 40, is that correct? So if I do like this, control F5, 40 is going to get printed. We know that. Now, the point I was making was this. If I say target of AR plus 3, what is going to get printed? What is going to get printed? Shush, you, you answered too much. <laughs> Someone else. 
What is going to get printed? Hey, you, coming in, what's going to get printed? <laughs> what's going to get printed on line 9? I'm going to go three integers further from the beginning of the array. So it'll be 12 or add 12 or whatever it is. What are you talking about? <laughs> we are talking about line 9. We are saying from the oh, address oh, of the beginning of the array. One, uh, 40. 40. Beautiful. 40 gets printed. Right, right, right. Is that OK? Are we OK with this, everyone? Are we OK? Now what's going to get printed? Now, what's going to get printed? What's going to get printed? Translate it in English for me. Target of AR. What is sitting at target of AR? Target of AR. Well, AR is, at the is the beginning of the array. So what is the first element of the array? What is 10 plus 3? There you go. 13 is printed. Are we OK with this? So. If I, don't, if I don't put the parentheses around it, then it's not going to add three integer to the address. It's going to add three to the integer, to the target of AR. Therefore, 13 is going to get printed. Are we OK with this? So that's that, right? Now that we know this, what the? That's not the place, is it? Oh, I put, wait. That's better. 0, 2. Pointers and arrays still. Now, what is the job of a pointer? To point to a piece of memory, correct? I know that AR is pointing to the beginning of the array, right? So I'm going to take the value of AR, I'm going to put it in P. Therefore, when I say printf percent %d target of P, what is going to get printed? What is going to get printed? 10, right? Correct? So if I do this, sorry, I compiled the previous one. Let's copy. I compiled the wrong file. There you go. So 10 is going to get printed. Now if I say, if I say, P plus 3, what's going to get printed? Huh? 40, perfect. Now if I say what's going to get printed? 40. What does it mean? Pointers, arrays, potatoes, potatoes. They are the same. Here, I have a snake with two heads. One is AR, the other one is P. They are, it's an array with two heads. I can use P to get to it. I can get, use AR to get to it. There is one difference between P and AR. You know what's the difference? Huh? Oh, the difference between P and AR is that P can point to somewhere else. You can make P to point to somewhere else, but you can never make AR to point somewhere else because AR is a constant pointer. It's doomed to always point to the array it owns. If you could change that, you could lose your array and never find it again, right? So that's the difference between a name of an array being a pointer and a regular pointer. Take a look at this.
Now, if you answer this one, you know pointers to the exact, you know pointers as a, as a three, 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 four, five person, OOP three, four, five. What's the, the output of line 13? Hmm? 50. Because now P is pointing to 20. So first element of P is 20, not 10. I added 1 to P. So P was pointing to the beginning. Now I added 1, it goes, points to the second one. Right? I can even go nuts and do something like this. I can go P plus plus and say, what is the output of line 15? 30. Why? Because when I said at line 8, P is A, R, P points to 10, right? Then at line 12, I said P plus plus, so it pointed to 20, right? Then at line 14, I said P plus plus again. Now it's point pointing to 30, correct? From 30 goes 0 further. Where does it go? Stands on 30. Are we OK with this? So this is essentially pointer arithmetic and array and all these stuff. This has a beautiful side effect. Let's first run it. OK? Now let's do this. What's going to happen here? I have a function called foo. OK? Now, function foo is being passed. Turn your cell phones off, you bad people. No one knows over there that actually it's my cell phone. <laughs> All right. So. So I am passing the address that is within AR into the function, right? So essentially, P will point where AR is pointing, correct? So when I go to that array, what's going to happen? It's going to print P0 at the first part of the loop, which is 10, 20. So essentially, by passing only the name of the array, I have access to the whole array, correct? Correct? One problem in here, not a problem, something to be cautious about. So first, first let's run it, right? Why do I keep doing this? Sorry, copy. <laughs> My apologies, I have the wrong thing. So I ran this one instead. One more time. So when I run this, this is what I get, right? Let's do it. Let's put a new line over here, printf. Oh, printf. That's a new version of printf. OK. All right. There you go. So it actually prints the file, right? Now see what I'm going to do. All right? It's still printing, correct? Now let's print it twice. What happened? The problem is that it's a snake with two heads. 
if in a function that you're passing an array to, by mistake, you change the array, you are changing the original. It's not a copy anymore. With a regular variable, when you pass as an argument, a copy is passed. When you change the value inside the array, nothing goes wrong. But like this, big, big concern. How do we fix this problem based on the test you have done? How do we fix this problem? We make sure. So you always remember what is, you always should remember what is the purpose of your function. You look at the purpose of your function, and if the purpose of your function is not to modify the array, make sure you make it a constant. So if by mistake you do it, compiler stands in your way. See? Look at that P. You see that little red thing yonder? Now it's actually telling me, hey, careful. Look at that. Expression must be a modifiable L value. So it won't compile. It's going to give me an error. So you have to always make sure that happens. Also, there is another way of showing this print int thingy that is the rookie way. It's not the rookie way. It's, a, it's an array notation. Instead of putting an asterisk, you can put this. You're essentially saying an array without a body. What does it mean? Just imagine you have an array. We had an array, right? Just imagine that you have an array without this red parts. What remains? Only the pointer, right? So essentially, it's like this, or like this. These two are identical, no difference. You can choose either. It's, but it's much better if you are passing an array to use the first notation. Why? Because it's like a comment that you're adding to your code. You're telling that I'm receiving an array. Another thing that I have to show you, please take a look. Let me walk through this and be uh, very uh, precise <clears throat> and look closely, see what's happening here. Take a look. I'll go inside. When I bring the mouse, what does it show in here? An array of five things, correct? You see? When I bring the mouse over here, it's an, and when the initialization is com when initialization is complete, you see I have five stuff, correct? As soon as I go to the function, what does it show? What happened to the rest? The rest are there. But the compiler has, has no way of knowing if this is a pointer pointing to one thing or it's a pointer pointing to five million things. It does not make any difference. Pointer is pointer. It's no way. There is no way for the compiler to know what is the target, what is the size of the target. Because of that fact, any time you are passing an array to a function, you have to, have to, have to always pass the size too. So now you are saying print int. In here, you're going to say five. And Or you can do n7. So what happens is this. Now your function is capable of printing any type of a, any size of the array as long as it's integer. 
One is five, the other one is seven. They are both printed and life is beautiful. It is impossible for C language to be able to detect what is the size of an array. Because of this fact, any time you are passing an array to a function, you must make sure you add the size as an argument. So inside the function, you can manage how far you are going. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Next thing. Because of the fact that when you pass an array to a function, you actually pass the pointer to the array and the whole array is accessible, now you can easily write a function to read as many integers as you want. But of course, you're not going to pass a constant thing anymore. Sorry, I'm not going to put pointer. I'm going to put it like this so it actually shows it's an array. So in here, I'm going to say printf. Enter. What was that? Enter <laughs> percent d integers. Okay, and I'm going to put over here size. And then I'm going to say int i for i set to 0, i less than size, and i plus plus p i set to get int. Right? Now I can actually read integers. So I can say read int. And I put it in AR to size of 5. And I can print that one out. Whoa. Say printf, you entered the following. All right. So when I run this program, when I get to this point, okay, it's got printed. Now when I get to this point, it actually goes, so AR over here is actually all these five stuff, right? And as soon as I get into that one, because P is now pointing to AR, when it's actually putting values into PI, it is putting value into the AR out there. So when I am done with this, uh oh, we don't want to see this. Sorry, wrong button. That's the, the assembly code for it. It's uh, exit the function. It's Shift F11, not Control. Shift F11. There you go. Now enter five integers. I'll go 34. That one, this one, that one, and that one. And when I come back over here, we'll see that AR actually holds those values that I just entered. So if you want to set an array in a function, it's much easier because it's automatically by pointer. It's as if you design something to modify by pointer, an array does that automatically. Anytime you want to read something into an array, it's very easy to create a function for it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Let's go to the next thing. Another useful thing that we can do right now, that now that we know arrays, is this. So this one is zero four, arrays and functions. Remember that long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, when I was telling you that strings are what? What is a string? What is a string? 
array of characters that terminated by zero, right? So it's terminated by zero now. Okay. So in here, I'm going to have character name 41, let's say. Now, we know that I cannot do this. Now I know even why. I mentioned that, I mentioned that at the beginning, you cannot set a string to another string, a character array, because it's not one entity. Now you know why. If you set a name to another, you're essentially extracting the address of one into another. And because name is a constant character pointer, you won't be able to do it. It's, it's, it's going to give you an error. I don't know what these cell phones are doing. I have no idea. It's like <laughs> OK. I think we have much more stronger thumbs, our generation, because of all this thing up here. Anyway, so I want to write a function that copies that for me. What can I do? Easy breezy. Void sdr copy. So do I need to pass the size of the array? I said whenever you are passing an array to a function, you must have the size passed to it too. Should I do that? Should I do that? Should I do that? Do I need to do that? I said you have to always pass the size of an array because the function that I'm writing the SDR copy will not know. So this function, I'm going to have a destination. So I'm going to say the destination is going to be character, destination, and constant character source array. Do I need to have integer size here? Do I or I do not? Do I or do not? It seems not, because I'm asking too many times. What is the definition of a string? Ends with a zero. A string has a stop sign in it. I know when it stops. I can always look for it. So I don't need a size. In an integer, I can't do that. I can't say when it's zero stop. Zero is an integer. I may need it. It's mainly part of my data. But string is not the same thing. In string, I can simply keep doing the copying thingy until I stop, until I get to a zero. So I'm going to go integer i for i set to zero and source i being not equal to zero. It means keep going, copying until you hit the zero at the end of the, at in source. And then while doing that, destination i will be set to source i. So one by one, the, all the characters got to get copied from str into fardad when I call that function. I'm just doing that in case. So str copy, I'm going to copy fardad from str into name. And I'm going to say printf percent s and name. Of course, I'm going to go to new line so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to run this beautiful program of mine. And the result will be error. Unidentified yet because str copy is capital C. This is what I'm going to get. Oops. What the heck? Although I followed the rule of string being null terminated when I was copying the source, but I was building destination two at the same time. What I built was a character array, not a string, because I did not, did not terminate it with a null. I have to do that. When you are copying a string or building a string, you have to always make sure that you apply the rule that you are using so future users can use it too. So destination i after that should be set to 0. And therefore, when I run it, I'm going to have only a far dot and not garbage after it. Are we OK with this? Are we OK 1? Are we OK 2? Perfect. 
This is the kindergarten version of SDR copy. You will never see a C programmer actually write it like this. A C programmer will write an SDR copy like this. Character pointer destination, constant character pointer source, and then it's going to say while the target of destination plus plus is set to the target of destination source plus plus done. How does that work? Let's walk through it. This is a pointer, this is a pointer. It's a constant character pointer, which means wherever source is pointing, you cannot write into it. It doesn't mean that source itself cannot change. Source can point to many different things, but whatever it's pointing, it cannot change. It's a read-only pointer, okay? The pointer itself is not read-only. The target is read-only. Are we okay with this? Now let's do it. First of all, we know plus plus happens after the loop, right? After the line. So I'm saying as soon as it comes in, destination is pointing to name and SD, uh, source is pointing to SDR, correct? So as soon as the while starts, it wants to check the condition. To check the condition, it has to do the statement. So it gets the target of source, that is F, and put it in the target of its destination, that is the first thing over here, right? And then the result of that is character F, correct? It checks character F. Is character F zero? No, so it's true, correct? Operation done, it adds one to destination, adds one to source, which means now destination is gonna point to the second element and source is gonna point to A. Now A is gonna get copy to destination. Still true? R is gonna get copy. D is going to get copied, A is going to get copied, D is going to get copied, and then the null termination is going to get copied, which means zero from source gets copied to destination. And the result is zero, which means false, stops and comes out. Okay? So C programmers, seasoned C programmers, use stuff like this because it's quicker, faster, smaller piece of code. Of course, the thing at the top, like I told you don't write cryptic code. I told you that in these, th these days, if you write a code that is cryptic, they're not going to hire you. They want a code that is maintainable. But between C programmers, the second one is a very obvious thing. It's not cryptic at all. If you have a knowledge of pointers and no plus plus happens after and know what is true or false in C, it's an obvious thing. It looks cool because it's just one line. Otherwise, it's a perfect thing to work with. That is going to issue a warning, though. When you run that program, it's going to issue a warning because you are using a single operator. Assignment operator is in a condition. It checks, asks you, are you sure you wanted to use this? It's, you didn't want to put a double thingy? That's what it does, OK? So that's that. So you see that it's a very simple function, right? It doesn't mean because it's simple they're not going to provide it to you. Concept of a string is a very simple thing, an array of characters that is terminated by zero, right? So copying a string, searching in a string, this, these things are very simple, comparing two strings to see which one comes first. These are very simple concepts. You could have written yourself easily, but because it's a, it's a very common thing that everybody uses, all these functions are already in string header file. So if you include string header file, use lowercase s and your lowercase c for SDR copy. It's there. You have string copy, string compare, SDR, SDR, uh, string cat, concatenates the two, uh, attaches a string at to the other one, like fardat soleil. I want to put soleil at soleil to the end of fardat. You can concatenate one string to another. I can look for dad inside fardad and see if I can find it or not. Like you have a text and you want to search something into it, it's a string that you want to search, right? That's a function for it called SDR, SDR. So these functions are all there that you can use. 
uh, and um, um, and that's it. So that's that. Um, this is something that they're going to teach you at the end of the semester. But because it's an obvious thing that you can follow after arrays and functions, I just mentioned it. All right. Now, any questions? Suggestions? Ah, go watch it again. <laughs> uh, cottages like this, and if there's no question now, I'm going to turn that off. Questions? And see if it's actually recorded properly. <laughs>